Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. What's up, Dallas Cowboys fans? Indy Tim here for the Dallas Cowboys Daily Blitz on FanStream Sports and the Fish Report YouTube channel. Just wanted to touch base with you guys a little bit, talk to you briefly this morning about the current state of the Dallas Cowboys roster after some of the free agent signings, where it stands now maybe with relation to some of the other so-called contenders in the NFC. We know the Cowboys historically, at least recently historically, haven't made the biggest splashes in free agency. They've been relatively quiet. And they were relatively quiet this offseason as well until a couple of big signings, at least what I consider to be big signings for the club. Of course, wide receiver Brandon Cooks coming from Houston in a trade and then cornerback Stephon Gilmore coming via trade from the Colts. Now, I think the Gilmore trade is huge because I think it will bolster that secondary quite a bit and that was certainly an issue for the Cowboys the last couple of seasons. Yes, Gilmore is certainly better than Anthony Brown. Brandon Cooks, the Cowboys have needed some wide receiver depth and they've needed some wide receiver veteran experience since they shipped Amari Cooper off to Cleveland for a bag of football tees. But I think both of these moves are significant because they add experienced veteran players to a couple of positions where you really needed it on the team. And it feels like for the first time in a long time, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, the Cowboys front office are making moves to significantly, significantly, it's easy for me to say, to significantly improve the roster rather than just for the sake of making moves. If, if you follow me there, I kind of feel like sometimes the Cowboys in the past have just made moves because they were expected to, to get their name in the news, and they weren't really helping the club significantly. I think these two additions, as well as some of the other additions of them bringing back some of their own, are huge. Of course, the re-signings of Pollard, well, the franchise tag of Pollard, maybe they still have a chance to re-sign him before the June 17th deadline. If not, he's here for another season anyway for $10 bucks. Um, Leighton Vander Esch is huge. Donovan Wilson is huge. I just feel like some of these roster moves that they've made, whether bringing players in from the outside or re-signing their own, are important moves for the club. Leighton Vander Esch, the last two seasons, has proven that he's a valuable piece of this defense. He stayed relatively healthy. I know he missed a few games at the end of last season, but for the last two years, he's been relatively healthy, and he's been an important part of this defense especially at linebacker while Micah Parsons has been playing around over there at defensive end. Uh, we know the importance of Tony Pollard, especially now with Zeke gone. And, you know, Rico Dowdle, don't sleep on that. I know he's been injured the entire time he's been here. But the Cowboys clearly see something in him to bring him back. Less than a million dollars. It's a very low risk Um Maybe medium reward. I don't see a huge upside for him, but I think he's important to the roster, at least for some of these guys. So you have some depth at running back. And when you compare the roster moves to some of the other teams, of course, we're going to compare the Cowboys to Philadelphia. We're going to compare the Cowboys to 49, the 49ers, the team that has ousted them out of the playoffs the last two seasons. Um, you know, the Eagles have lost multiple key defensive starters, but... They've retained some other key pieces. Of course, the most important probably being that cornerback duo of Darius Slay and James Bradbury. I really thought Darius Slay was going to go elsewhere when they initially released him, but uh, not to be so as he's back in Philadelphia. And of course, adding them to the offensive prowess of who a lot of people call Jalen Hurts the best quarterback in the NFC, if not then the NFC East. Right now, he's probably the best quarterback in the NFC East. I would not put him... The best as the best quarterback in the NFC. But then you look at the 49ers, the roster is loaded at every position except quarterback, maybe the most important position. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo's gone. Brock Purdy's going to be hurt. There's rumors of Trey Lance on the trading block, but who's going to play quarterback until Brock Purdy can, can be healthy again? I don't know. But when I compare the Cowboys moves to at least those two teams' moves, the Cowboys win. And it's not close. And when you're looking at this so-called Super Bowl window for the Cowboys, for Jerry, 
everything they've done indicates that they realize that this is a closing window, especially with Dak Prescott at the helm. He's entering his eighth season in the league. The last two, three years, he's sort of gotten the uh, reputation as being sort of a an injury-prone player with little nagging things. I don't know that I believe in anything like that, but you can't argue that he's gotten hurt in the last few years. And those little injuries aren't going to go away the younger or the older he gets. Clearly, they're going to, there's going to be more of those, right? So the window for Dak Prescott is closing. And it looks like the Cowboys recognize that by some of the moves they've made. And I applaud Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, Will McClay, all these guys, uh, the personnel side of it, for finding these guys, for working out these trades, literally for next to nothing. You got both Cooks and Gilmore for, for nothing really. Um, and I just think these are big moves for the Cowboys, big moves for the organization going forward. And it does tell us that they're ready to win now. I want to hear what you guys think about these offseason signings, whether it was the most important one was one of these guys they brought in from the outside, if it was re-signing one of their own, who was the biggest offseason move so far? And they may not be done. We still have time in free agency. Of course, we have the draft coming up April 27th through 29th in Kansas City. We'll be all over that here at CowboysSI.com and on FanStream Sports. So make sure you stay with us. But let me know here in the comments section what you think the best move was for the Cowboys. Maybe what the worst move was for the Cowboys. Maybe you didn't like them letting Zeke go. Uh, but let me know. I'd love to hear from you. We'll do it all again here shortly. Until then, boys and girls, we'll see you.